Let's start with a definition. Hypokalemia is defined as a serum potassium of less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. Now with that in mind, how do you know if someone is hypokalemic? Well, to start off with, most people or 99% of those with hypokalemia have an underlying disorder. Also, mild hypokalemia is not easy to diagnose since it rarely causes symptoms. However, as serum potassium begins to drop, the following symptoms begin to appear. One of the most prominent and detectable symptoms is muscular dysfunction, like muscle cramps, fasciculations, which are small involuntary muscle contractions, paralytic ileus, which is temporary intestinal paralysis, hypoventilation, or lower respiratory rate, hypotension, or lower blood pressure, and rhabdomyolysis, which is muscle injury. Other symptoms include impaired renal concentrating ability, which will present as polyuria or increased urine output, and polydipsia or increased thirst or water intake. This is mostly due to impaired renal concentrating ability, but probably the most serious symptom are abnormal heart rhythms, which can lead to ventricular tachyarrhythmias. For example, here's a normal ECG wave when serum potassium is between 3.5 and 5.5 milliequivalents, which is normal. When serum potassium is lower to 3 milliequivalents per liter, we see a slight T wave depression and the appearance of the U wave. When serum potassium is lowered to 2 milliequivalents, we see a slight increase in the P wave and an increase in the PR interval, the further depression of the T wave, a further increase in the U wave. And finally, when serum potassium is lowered to 1 milliequivalent, we see the ST interval becoming depressed and the further increase in the U wave. Now, as we mentioned, hypokalemia-induced changes in heart rhythm can lead to serious heart problems, so restoring serum potassium is a critical first step in treating hypokalemia as well as treating the underlying cause. Now, the two most prominent causes are renal losses and GI tract losses. While losses through the skin, intracellular shifts, and drugs also occur, they are not as common. Renal losses include excess adrenal steroid secretion, like aldosterone, which increases sodium reabsorption, and potassium secretion. Genetic disorders like Barter and Gittleman syndrome lead to reduced potassium reabsorption, while Little syndrome leads to excess potassium secretion, and renal tubular disease leads to reduced potassium reabsorption. Now, GI tract losses are due primarily to vomiting and diarrhea, which lead to decreased absorption. Now, drugs like thiazide, loop, and osmotic diuretics are known to reduce potassium reabsorption by the kidneys by blocking the transporters involved in potassium reabsorption, while drugs like penicillin enhance potassium secretion by creating a lumen negative potential. Now, potassium can also be lost through the skin via burns or sweat as a result of strenuous exercise. And finally, increased cellular uptake can lead to decreased serum potassium which can occur under metabolic alkalosis, where the cells secrete hydrogen ions in exchange for potassium ions, or excess catecholamine or insulin release, which promotes the cellular uptake of potassium.